Hello, thank you for joining me today. I'm going to talk about the restaurant marketing in particular, although what I'm going to talk about can apply to other businesses as well. But uh, restaurant marketing, this particular approach works really well for restaurants, bakeries, you know, similar type businesses. And so if you look at statistics, we'll just start with statistics. Um, it's about seven times more expensive to acquire new customers than to deal with existing customers. So much, much more, much more pricey to deal with new customers. Secondly, uh, looking at some statistics here, um, it says that existing customers are 50% more likely to try new products and spend 31% more on average compared to new customers. So that's something also to consider that with existing customers, you can have a lot more traction uh, in terms of business and of course conduct a lot more business. Um, another aspect of it that's interesting that the statistically the probability of selling an existing customer is 60 to 70 percent whereby probability of selling to a new customer is between 5 and 20 percent. So obviously people who know you and people who deal with you already are a much much cheaper approach to sell to than trying to find some new people. And of course, there's many other benefits that uh, come with existing customers. You know, if they like you, they're going to talk about you. They're going to put you on social media. They're going to be your advocates. They're going to talk to their friends, their relatives. So there is that aspect of growing as well. So, so you can have existing customers bring new customers along. But in terms of marketing, you know, people, if you listen to so-called gurus out there for marketing, they will tell you that you need to find your ideal audience first. You, know, you, you need to find your audience for the business. And then if you find your audience, then you can go ahead and market to these people. And that's to a degree true. The problem with most of these gurus is it really, for you as a business person, it means nothing. OK, I need to find my ideal audience. Where do I go to find my ideal audience? OK? and. Uh, and, and of course, the even simpler question is, you know, what is my ideal audience? So let's start with the second question first. Your ideal audience would be people who know you, number one, uh, people who like you, and people who want to do business with you. That, that's what I would say, kind of one way to describe somebody who would be your ideal audience. Okay. In terms of finding them, this is the trick. I mean, obviously, you know, like I said, the gurus of the marketing will tell you just go and find your ideal audience. Well, it sounds good on the surface. Yeah, those are the people you need to find. But where? How do you go about it? Where do you find these people? And that's the challenge that most businesses uh, face most of the time. For restaurants, I think, you know, after dealing with restaurants for many, many years, I think the challenge is not as difficult as it is for other types of businesses. Because the ideal customers that they're trying to get are the people who actually are sitting right in front of their eyes. I mean, sitting right there at the restaurant. If you own a restaurant or you own a bakery, you have constant flow of people coming in. Okay? Some of these people are people who like you. Some of these people may not like you. So before going to the details of um, doing customer marketing and doing the you know, marketing to your ideal people, it's really important to understand that no matter what kind of marketing you're using, it doesn't matter any kind of techniques, any kind of suggestions, they mean nothing if the service behind the uh, marketing effort or the product, if it happens to be a product, is not as good as it can be. So if you provide a horrible service at your restaurant on a fairly normal basis, no matter what kind of marketing you're doing, it's going to backfire anyway. You're not going to make any headway. You might make a step forward. You're going to have two steps back afterwards. It just, it all starts with delivering as good a customer service experience as you can. And that means also delivering on the things like the core food quality, everything associated with the experience. Uh, and of course, in the restaurant, food is a huge part. Um, and the service, the you know, the wait staff, things like that. All these things are important, but the overall customer experience has to be as good as you can possibly make it before even thinking about any kind of marketing. Okay. Once you get that part in order, and that's working pretty well, and you are proud of what you're doing, and then you can uh, then you can move into the marketing arena. So again, dealing with existing customers is your absolute best avenue to go. Um, 
in terms of spending less money and getting more traction and getting more business okay so how do you go how do you actually do that I mean how how what what do you do do you come to people and say hey please come back or anything like that obviously you don't no, nobody does this in public I mean you'd like to be able to tell people to come back so some people set up things like you know we have a newsletter sign up for a newsletter and we'll be in touch and so on and so forth and a lot of people kind of frown on this kind of approach because unless they really really love you uh, you know they don't really want to first of all if you get the emails from some list somewhere people immediately assume that that's spam and it is if, if you send it to, to them uh, without them asking for it uh, that's why a term became popular known as permission marketing is a much more potent way to do things and that's where you have some sort of maybe it's an offer maybe it's something else and you know there's a landing page and people sign up with their email and name and then you know after that then they, they get the newsletter so that's one way to do it and people have been doing it quite a bit because it's much more potent way to uh, have people that you deal with be open to reciprocate in terms of your offers and things like that if they're actually interested and willing to get the information from you so that's the really important part to uh, understand and remember you need to not just bombard people with stuff and you know dump all kinds of things on social media come see me come by for me come see me come by for me it doesn't work okay there's so much stuff out there nobody's paying attention in terms of those kind of details if you already have really good customers that that you know totally worship you let's put it this way then you don't really need to market much to them anyway because they already like you but in terms of people who may like you to a degree and there's tons of those kind of people those are the people you want to be marketing to okay so again so how do you go about doing that so one of the ways people came up with which worked reasonably well uh, was the uh, customer loyalty programs and to be more specific people would have a card that they put together and the card has some sort of an offer usually and the card the card usually they call them punch cards because they usually get punched holes get punched or something gets stamped on the card to indicate that the purchase was made and the offer a lot of times would be something like you know buy nine meals and get the 10 free or buy five meals and get the six at 50 percent off or whatever you know some kind of an offer and so people have to take this paper card and bring it in and then the card gets stamped or gets punched and then of course psychologically speaking that kind of approach is good because first of all nobody is giving you this card forcibly so you as a customer have to take this card uh, on your own volition and if you take the card that that implies right there that there's intent to use it otherwise why would you take a card if you're not going to be using it so if you actually take the card then that's step one step two in this thing again speaking going through it psychologically is that if you have this card in your pocket and you're thinking should I go to restaurant a for which I have a card and get a discount or go to restaurant B for which I have nothing then obviously restaurant a seems like a more appealing option at least from economic standpoint for that particular person okay and we're not talking about quality of food or anything else let's say they're even so if everything is even obviously you're gonna go where it's cheaper or where you have a discount so that's where the card works really well too and then the next thing is that the, the fact that you have to buy X number of meals to be able to get your freebie or your reward that also kind of pushes you very subtly to continue to come back maybe even more often than you normally would because you want to get that reward you know everybody wants to get deals I mean it's just the way human nature is we love to get deals and uh, and and so with, with this particular approach using these uh, customer loyalty cards as they call them or customer loyalty programs it works reasonably well for some people and for some uh, restaurants because it very gently not just people to come back uh, come back more often and spend the money here and then of course you know as the reward for them uh, giving the business then of course they get their reward which is either a discount or um, you know free meal or whatever the offer might be so it's kind of a recipro reciprocal approach that if you commit 
to giving the restaurant X amount of business, the restaurant then will commit on their part and reciprocate with giving you some kind of reward. And that, like I said, that's a pretty popular concept in a lot of places. Uh, the problem with this approach in today's age is that paper has a lot of problems. You know, I'm, if you listen to any of my other stuff, you know, I'm not a fan of uh, paper. I mean, I like it okay, but not, 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 not in these kind of uh, situations. Uh, and so the, the problem with paper, if you look at it from a practical standpoint, is, you know, people stick it in their wallets. And if you think about scalability, then you know you can't assume that you're going to have you're going to be the only restaurant or you're going to be the only program out there that offers similar type rewards. You might have a store that says buy so much worth of paper supplies and we'll give you ten percent off. You have another restaurant doing the same kind of thing. You have another place that's doing gym. Uh, you have a chiropractor that says you know come in nine times and the tenth time you will give you the uh you know put your bag back in shape for 50 percent off i mean things like that there's all kinds of different people doing this and the challenge is again of course with uh keeping all of this is you know you can only fit so much in your wallet number one number two it's irritating to no end at least for me to sift through you know 15 cards trying to find the right one because you don't know where it is the one you're looking for not to mention being clumsy at times and spilling all these cards on the floor and uh, looking like a dunce and, and just being more and more irritated at the whole approach. So a lot of people kind of don't even use it. And a lot of people throw them away. A lot of people lose them. You know, people leave them in their pockets. And then once it's gone through the washing machine, then it's pretty much unusable and things like that. So paper has a lot of problems, even though the concept is solid in terms of customer loyalty part using something like a punch card. The physical approach to how it's been done has not been stellar at all using paper. Uh, the second element of it is the the second problem, I should say, uh, with with punch cards, is the fact that people may take your punch card, but you have no clue who these people are. You have no clue how to get a hold of them. In other words, you cannot engage with these people to build a relationship. And of course, any kind of marketing effort that you're doing, the idea if if you're if you do listen to uh, marketing experts from a long time ago and and the current ones i mean all of them are on the same page there is everything we're doing is about building a relationship you're not going to be doing any business with anybody if they don't trust you and the only way they're going to trust you is if you build a relationship and a relationship as you know just like friendship just like any other kind of relationship is something that takes time it takes effort and it's something that you can't just go and buy or expedite in some way it, it usually doesn't work like that so it's something that just takes certain it's a process in other words the relationship building is a process and so using a uh, paper punch card approach for to marketing even though on the upside it does have good benefits about people coming back more often people giving you business on a continuous basis and in theory, it's and in practice, it actually has some good benefits. At the same time, the, the paper approach itself to using this kind of marketing is flawed deeply because you don't know who these people are. They're coming back, they ordered you know lunch, and they left, and you still don't even know the guy's name or the woman's um, preference or anything like that. And so, so you and you can't easily reach out to them. You know, when you have a line of fifty people standing for lunch. You're not going to spend a bunch of time trying to converse with this particular person and try to get to know them better. It's just, it just not what people do, not what businesses do. It doesn't work like that. So that's why the paper punch approach is definitely a flawed concept for marketing, uh, even though, like I said, some of its benefits are definitely there. And then the other part of it is, so this communication, if you're talking about the communication part, how do you, if, if you were able to communicate with these people, we said you can't communicate with them uh, talking to them face to face because uh, it's just not what people do. You know, people want to get through their lunches as quickly as possible. They have to go back, uh, go back to work. Um, they may or may not have a good day. I mean, it just you just cannot make relationships in in a thirty second conversation and payment uh, at the register at a restaurant. It just doesn't. Be, not to mention the fact that you have one of your own employees doing it. It's not like you, the owner, can do it. It's the employees that are doing it. And so from a branding standpoint, from 
pretty much all stem points, it's not practical to do communication using this approach. So how do you communicate? Well, there's a number of different ways. There's email, there's social media, um, and of course there's, you know, face to face I mean, there's different ways how we can do it we just ruled out face to face uh, for the most part I mean talking about on a large scale you know big picture type deal uh, so what else what else can we do well social media and like I said you get bombarded with zillion different people doing uh, different things some people may look at your stuff some people may not oh look at this another picture of food another picture of a table another picture of food it, it gets old it doesn't really build a relationship anyway I mean, you can take the best pictures you can do, and I take a lot of food pictures for a lot of my restaurant clients, and and the, no question that people do like food pictures. I mean, that's the reason I post them, and you want to get kind of creative with them. You want to get into the video mode, things like that. So it keeps people entertained, keeps people interested, but you're not really engaging too much and talking to them because they may click on like, and they may click on plus one on Google Plus, for example, but that's not really engagement to a large degree where you can come back. I mean, if you look at some of these, uh, a lot of stuff I get in terms of uh, engagement on Google Plus, for example, is from people who don't even live in the same state. And so with that being the case, it's rewarding for you as a restaurant owner, business owner, to get you know 50 likes on your Instagram post. But if all these 50 likes come from other states or come from other countries, it doesn't, these people are not coming into your business anytime soon, not to your restaurant anyway. Nobody's going to fly across the country to uh, eat at your restaurant or something like that. So it's more of an entertainment value than anything else. It does have some relevance, and I'm not advocating not doing social media. I'm just saying it's nowhere near as effective as other ways of communications and building relationships. So like I mentioned, email is another one. And if you look at statistics, for example, let's say comparing, for example, tweeting on Twitter, and sending an email out to somebody, the email is six times more potent in terms of results than a tweet. Six times, not 6%, not 60%, 600%. It's six times more potent than sending a tweet to somebody. So if you look at like this one statistic alone, you immediately begin to realize that email marketing is definitely where it's at. Okay, that's the most effective way to engage into a kind of one-on-one -on -one with people because email is more intimate because usually it is be between two parties. You know, I'm the sender and you're the recipient. So you wind up getting the uh, uh, information for me. It's like we're having a miniature conversation, just you and I. I mean, that's the kind of psychological deep feeling inside. We don't think of it this way, but that's how it winds up being interpreted by the brain. You know, if you're sending me an email, then you're sending me email. You may be sending it to 10,000 other people, but the way I see it, it came to me, to my inbox, and it came from you. So there is one special attribute about that. Second thing about email is, is, is people are much more, I think, open to emails in terms of as long as they get it from somebody who they actually like to get it from and want to get it from. Um, uh, it's something that they can do in their own time. In other words, email doesn't have the immediacy of like a text or social media post where just, you know, it comes in and then it's lost in the stream somewhere. Email is going to be there until you do something with it. So it's more findable, if you will, because most people do look through their emails and obviously they can mark them and kill them before reading them. But for the most part, at least they glance at it to a point to see if it's something that might be of interest. And if you look at things like using Gmail, for example, as the client, or inbox, you can actually see part of the email message itself in the actual header itself being shown on the screen. So you get at least some feeling about what it's supposed to be about. And then you can see if you want to open it, if you want to deal with it, and so on and so forth. So no question that from a marketing standpoint, emails need to be short, just like forms, same same kind of approach. You need to keep it short and you need to, need to keep it to, the, to uh, um, make your point, in other words. But at the same time, Email is definitely, if you look at statistics, you can Google it, look at email statistics, you'll see that it's it's pretty phenomenal, uh, statistically speaking, how potent email is. And so, again, going back to the conversation we just had short time before, we want to be able to get to people, communicate with them, and build relationship via email on an ongoing basis, and we want to do it with people who actually want 
people who would be our ideal customers. I mean, there's no other way to put it. And so who are our ideal customers? Again, people who like us, people who know us, and people who are willing and interested in giving us business. Those are the people who I would call our ideal customers for a restaurant type business, okay? So putting all of this together, now I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, Fred because I'm doing the webinar here and it's my service. So obviously I can do a selfless, I mean, selfish, not selfless promotion here. Shameless promotion, I should say. Uh, so Fred, for those that don't know, it stands for frequent dividends. Initially it was called frequent diner because I meant to only uh, sell it to restaurants, but uh, one of the people who signed up for it is actually a baby clothing store here in Seattle area. And so the name was changed from frequent diner to frequent dividends because it, it makes more sense. And I thank Mr. Mark Bars for um, introducing the concept of changing of the name for me. But for short, you know, uh, I called it Fred, frequent dividends, Fred. Um, so what, what the service does, you know, I'm not going to go into a lot of details because I have some other videos on that. You can check it out if you want, but the basic premise takes on exactly what I just talked about, whereby it starts out being a customer loyalty program, but it's completely digital. So there's no paper involved at all. And now since everybody walks around and, uh, you know, in their hands, they may have all kinds of things, but usually they have one of these, uh, that's exactly where the, where Fred kind of lives, if you will, is it works on cell phones, it works on mobile devices, and it and, and nothing else. The, the whole idea is to, to, to be completely mobile-based because, like I said, everybody comes in and everybody carries one of these. And the idea behind Fred was to make it painfully simple, as they call it. Okay, I want it to be so simple that you can't really get much simpler than that. And the reason for that is because that's what people... If you really ask people if they want something simple or complex, hands down, they're going to tell you they want something simple. They want it functional, but they want it simple. And so the simpler, the better. And so my idea was that I wanted to create something. I didn't want to create an app because just like with having the, you know, a dozen cards in your wallet, which is a nuisance, having a zillion of apps from every restaurant that over is, get our app, get our app. It's just too many apps and too many apps to keep track of, too many apps to have, to download, to install, to upgrade, too much hassle. So I wanted to create something that would be hassle-free, pretty much, work in any kind of environment, you know, any restaurant you walk in, it'll work just fine. And at the same time, something that would be um, obviously functional. So it will do as much work as possible for you. So I'll just describe a little bit how it works. It works using QR codes. I'm a big fan of QR codes because they do an excellent job in many environments. And so what happens is a, a person walks into your business, let's say your restaurant in this example, and they see a little plaque that says, buy nine meals and get 10 free. Simply scan the, the QR code below to get started. So at that point in time, when somebody comes in, they obviously have a choice. They can either sign up for this or, or just move on. So for people who are not your ideal customers, meaning they don't, necessarily know you or like you or want to do business with you, they'll move on. They're not scanning anything. They, they want to participate in anything. They're gone. So now you just eliminated, you know, I was going to talk about the funnel. So the funnel is, as you know, something that you start at the top. It's fairly large and you put all this content in there. If you think about like the oil funnel uh, that you use to put oil in your car, usually you know, use a funnel to, to put the oil in. And the reason is because you're pouring a bunch of oil on top, but there is a very small amount of oil that actually needs can go into the hole uh, in the engine. So it winds up kind of going down like this. And, and by, the, by the time you get down, you have a fairly small opening. So you start with huge opening, so it's very easy to pour a lot of stuff in there, but it's gonna obviously come out in the amount it should come out. And so with sales, it's a very similar, or with marketing in this case, it's a very similar approach. You start with all these people coming into your restaurant. So think of it as all these people jumping into your funnel. And so they come up and they see this little thing right in front of the restaurant that says, you know, uh, if you'd like to participate in our, uh, whatever you want to call this customer loyalty program, uh, please scan the, um, the QR code below and, uh, and just proceed from there. So like I said, person comes in, they looked at it and they thought, no, I don't want to do this. I don't want to participate in any program. We'll just move on. So they're gone. They came into the funnel and they're gone. 
not your ideal customer if they don't want to deal with you. Then we got person number two comes in and says, it's a new person. They've never been to your restaurant. They come in, they like your decor, they like how friendly people are and smiling. It looks like a nice, you know, the smells in the restaurant, they're real nice. They haven't eaten anything yet, but, you know, they, they th think it's pretty cool. So they see this sign and they may or may, do, they, they may not do anything about it. But then when they look at it, they decide based on maybe the reviews they read or, or something or whatever the case may be. They thought that, yeah, this is the place I want to be coming back to. Okay. I mean, this looks like a place that I, I, I want to give some business to. And so what they do then, they see this ad, I mean, this promo, and they go, yeah, absolutely. I don't have any problems. And so they go ahead and they scan the code. I mean, that's simple enough. Most people these days have these QR scanners. You can get them for free from Play Store, from App Store. You know, they're available everywhere. So no big deal. If you don't have one, you can easily get one. But most people already have it either preloaded or, uh, you know, they use it for other purposes. So they already, already have it on their phone. So they scan the code. And then as soon as they scan the code, they see the logo. You know, the, the service is very, uh, totally not very, but totally branded to the place that's uh, running it. And they see the logo and it says, please give us your name and email and phone number, which is optional. And uh, you'll get an email shortly. So at that point, the person has a choice. You know, they're thinking, okay, I did scan the code, but now they want me to give them some personal information like name and email. I don't want to do that. I don't, I don't want it because I know what's going to happen. They're going to start sending me emails. Don't want it, not interested. So again, that person basically at that point just moves away. They did not submit the form. Nothing was done. Nobody knows who they are. Nobody's dealing with them on that level. They're not your ideal customer, again, because they're not interested in talking to you on a continuous basis, potentially later using emails. Everybody pretty much understands that if somebody is asking you for email, they're going to be contacting you via email. I mean, it's not any kind of a stretch of the imagination any longer. So this person also leaves. Then a third person comes in, and that person maybe has been here a couple of times. He really likes the restaurant. No problem. And then they see all of a sudden this new offer, and they go, yeah, absolutely. I'd love to do this. So they go ahead and scan it and says, well, give us your name and your email. And the person goes, no problem. I, I'd love to hear from these guys. I love these guys. Or I like them, or I want to deal with them, whatever the case may be. It's, it's one of your ideal customers. They want to get stuff from you, and they want to continue to deal with you. So now that we got the ideal customer in place, they scan it, they fill out name, email, and potentially phone number. Phone number is set up in Fred to be optional specifically because some people may not want to be getting text messages. So that's their way to avoid getting those if they don't want them. But right now, we're not even doing anything with, with text messages, just something for the future. So essentially, just name an email you know, very quick, click submit. As soon as they click submit, it takes them to the restaurant's website. So you know, the person has a chance to look through the website, get some more information. And that's where it's important to make sure that your website is on the ball, as I would call it. You know, it's something that's very nicely done, something that's appropriate for your kind of business, for your restaurant, something that gives people the information they need to know. And you're dealing usually with two kinds of customers. You're dealing with customers that know you and customers that don't know you. Those are the only two people that exist out there. So for people that know you, the only thing they really need to have is a link to possibly order online from you, uh, phone number easily so they can call you if they need to, and driving directions in case they know of you, they like you, but they don't remember how to get to you for whatever reason, so you got the address and directions. Other than that, they don't really need to know anything else. If they need food pictures. They don't need to know about you. They already know all the stuff. They've already seen it. Done deal. So that's group very easy to um, address. The other group, uh, which is the people who don't know you yet, those are the people that you do need to address in a non-salesy sales fashion, if you will. In other words, you don't want to be dumping stuff on people and just getting in their face. But at the same time, you want to tell them a little bit about the restaurant, about yourself, uh, about the food there is. Uh, you want to tell them about maybe show them some pictures of the interior and exterior. Give people enough information to determine. If somebody was to sit down and say, okay, here's the website. Do I want to go and give these people business? Obviously, you cannot have them taste the food or even smell the food using the internet. But in terms of any other information related to restaurant, you can definitely make it presentable. It could be a video. It could be you know graphical uh, just images. There's different ways to do it. But the idea is to address the points that people want to know. In other words, do not talk about the weather or do not talk about the leaves being green. Talk about things that people want to know 
in dealing with your restaurant specifically. If people want to know about Leaves, they should go to the Leaves website. Okay, so make sure it's not about you and your likes. You know, in my case, for example, I used to play drums. That doesn't mean that on my uh, IT related website, I should be putting something about drums. That's, that's kind of the example. Is don't make it about you. You need to make it about people who are going to be coming to the website, your intended audience, okay? And so you need to be addressing their interests, their needs. So you put together a nice website, and so now the person got to your website. They can look, get some information. It just reiterates this relationship building and your credibility by having that. One of the other very important aspects to have on the website would be testimonials. It doesn't have to be 100 of them. Could be just three, five, and preferably videos. Those are huge for people to really get on your side of the fence, if you will. Because if you have you know a bunch of people coming and saying that they really like you, you know, I have some in some of my clients, you know, the guy left a, I think it was like a 10 second message, and it was nothing. And the guy goes, I've been coming here for 17 years. I love these people. Okay. This is it took a few seconds to say something like this, but the value of it is priceless. Because if, if you listen to this, I've been coming here for 17 years. I love these people. What else do you need to know? Whether you want to go to this restaurant or not, when somebody says something like that. And so testimonials are a huge deal. And obviously, reviews in Google, things like that are also very important. So you want to make sure you address all these aspects to make sure that's in place. So now the person signed up. They're eager. They, they, they want to get the deals. And of course, your deal was buy nine, get 10 free. So they understand the rules of the game. They understand that it is the game that you're trying to get them to come back and buy and buy and buy. That's the intent. Nothing wrong with that. That's why you're in business. Okay. And then all they need to do is just fill just a few of these pieces of information. They're done. So in marketing speak on the internet, it's very similar to what people call a landing page, except we're not doing the traditional landing page here. You know, again, people came in, they scanned the code, they put a name and email, and that's basically kind of like equivalent to a landing page approach to take them to the next step in, in the process. In our case, it just takes them right to your website and they're done. So it's very quick, very simple, okay? Now, subsequently, when they come back, if they want to take advantage of this offer, which is, again, totally up to them, everything is set up to be up to the actual customer. Nothing is being pushed on them at this point, okay? And nothing is going to be pushed on them that much later either. I'll explain in a second why. So then they come in the second time, but before they come in, I should say, let's not jump over anything. Within a minute or so, less than a minute usually, they get an email at the email address they specified. And that email clearly indicates that, you know, thanks them for signing up uh, for this program and shows again logo of your restaurant and the name and says, you know, from now on, when you come to the, to the restaurant, please show the staff, anybody on staff, um, when you're making a purchase, this email with the QR code shown below. So there's a little QR code right there in the email embedded that's completely tied to you, I mean, to the customer as unique to that only that one customer and unique only to that particular restaurant. So you can't use it anywhere else. It has to be used there. And so what happens when they come in next time to buy a meal, uh, they would show this code, you know, this email, it's on their phone to the staff member, staff member uses their phone or, or tablet, you know, any mobile device, to simply scan that code. And when they scan it, it asks them to enter a verification code, which is just a couple of, uh, couple of digits. And the verification code is only known by the staff. So, you know, the, the idea there was to prevent fraud. So people don't just scan it at home and then bring and say, hey, give me my free meal. So the staff enters the verification code. And when they enter it, couple of really cool things happen. Number one, the screen comes back on, on the staff stand and says customer name, and then says number of uh, items purchased, including today, number of uh, meals or items, whatever it might be. And so this is really important because at that point, you have a chance to do kind of superior customer service than most people do. Because instead of saying, thank you for coming today, you can say, thank you for coming today, Mr. Jones or Pat, or whatever the guy's name is, because it's right there in front of the face of the um, of the staff member. That is huge in many ways, because when you get into that kind of level of personality, uh, not personality, but personal, getting that personal, that's a huge part about moving forward with this relationship building. When you start addressing people by their name, whether it's last name or first name, for a lot of people, it totally takes them, you know, 
for a loop, for a spin, whatever you want to call it, because they're amazed. That, you know, I hear I come in, I, I give the, the email, you know, they scan the deal, and the guys immediately say, all I show them is a little square box, and now he calls me by my name. Pretty, you know, pretty nice. Nothing mind-shattering or earth-shattering, but at the same time, it's definitely a very nice gesture to do something like that. Optional, if you don't want to have your staff doing it, you don't have to, but it's a nice thing to do. And the system, you know, Fred allows you to do it. And then at the same time, you can see that, you know, they bought seven meals and then, you know, after they buy nine, they're going to get 10 free. So you can, you know, the wait person can also tell them that, you know, you got two more purchases and you get a free meal to kind of, again, gently nudge them into the fact that, you know, if you come back pretty quickly here, and then you're going to get that free meal that much sooner. That's the concept. You can also gamify the concept because you can say, uh, you can offer, for example, and there's many different things you can do marketing-wise with this, but you can say, you know, have a QR code generated, not for a single person, but for the entire company. Have the QR code shared with the entire company, and that way when anybody from company or department, however you want to do it, anybody from that company who shows up with that code, it will register when it's scanned as a meal purchase, right? And then what's happening is that because of the fact that you don't know who is going to get to 10, somebody is going to win that free meal, but it's unknown who is going to do it. So, you know, John comes in and he's purchased number five. And then the next day, Mary comes in, she's purchased number seven. And, you know, it just keeps kind of going on and on like this with different people buying stuff. And then next thing you know, you know, John comes back and says, you're number nine. Uh, you know, so next purchase is, I mean, next meal will be free. So the guy obviously is going to try to get over there tomorrow, except Mary got there first and she gets the free meal. So you can kind of turn it into a little game if you wanted to help. But for you as the business, it's nothing but more and more money and more and more business and faster. So the loyalty, the, the customer loyalty approach works really well. But if you look at it in terms of how it functions, it's very similar to the functionality of punch cards, except instead of, instead of showing a card, you're showing your email. And instead of them punching a card, they simply scan it with their phone. So you have one phone being scanned by another phone. But the concept is very similar to how punch cards work. And then the system automatically tells you, tells the staff member, when it's time to give them a free meal or whatever the reward is in nice big red letters so they know exactly when it's supposed to be happening. So nobody needs to keep track of anything or do anything. It's all done automatically, all done by Fred behind the scenes in this very kind of simple but very effective manner. And so then it's just the process repeats. People come back. They don't need to do anything else. In the meantime, here's what's happening on the back end. On the back end, remember, when they signed up, they gave you the email address, right? And with the understanding that you're going to be sending them email. Otherwise, you know, why would anybody give their email address if they expect not to get it? So one thing that you want to do, and I encourage all my um, Fred users to do it, and all of them do do it, uh, is institute a policy where in your emails are going to be going out to these people, make sure you put a line, plus it's, it's the legal thing to do too, to say you can opt out anytime. And so what you want to do is you have this email list growing on a continuous basis as you use Fred, but at the same time, you know, do a little bit of work or, or if you have PCS, you know, my company managing the email list for you and the emails for you, then we take care of it to make sure if, John Doe says he doesn't want to get emails anymore, you take him out. Now, does that mean he can't participate in the customer loyalty program? No, of course not. You don't want to be ruining your relationships over anything like that at all. I mean, the idea is to build relationships, not ruin them. So you look that much grander because here you wanted to do a reciprocation between them supplying email so you can email them in exchange for them giving you a discount. And now you're saying, I don't want to be getting your emails, your other offers, your other announcements and things like that. So you're saying, okay, if you don't, that's fine. But, you know, you can still continue to use the loyalty thing. So that's kind of a, a nice thing to do right there. And so the idea being that you only send e emails out to people who want to get these emails. Don't send it to anybody who says we don't want it anymore and let them opt out anytime. And then you just come up with literally unlimited number of marketing programs you could potentially put together that cost you nothing to email. That's the be beauty is if you're actually doing this yourself, then you have the email list supplied to you by PCS. You know, we run the whole service. I mean, the Fred is run by us. We manage everything in terms of it, uh, its uh, functionality, applications. You know, it's all in the cloud. We, we take care of all of that. You don't have to worry about it. You don't pay for the details of it like that. I mean, there is a fee for using Fred, but there is no 
there's no additional uh, things you need to worry about or think about. You just take care of your business and that's it. This whole uh, functionality is done in an automated fashion. And so when you do need to send an email, whatever the message is, whatever you want it to look like, whatever you want to say, that's something that can be done by you as often or as in or as infrequently as you wish. The only thing I would say is you don't want to be barraging people with zillion emails, you know, you know, one offer this morning, another offer this afternoon. It's way too much. Plus, you don't have that kind of time anyway, considering that you're running a business. So if you send people something, you know, once a month, a couple of times a month, maybe once a week at most, I would not send more than that. But if you think about what you're going to be sending them, what kind of offers, you know, obviously the obvious things that come up uh, to mind are things like holidays. You know, Father's Day is coming up. You send a nice email, like I sent to uh, some of my clients today on behalf of them, saying that, you know, here's a, like one restaurant, for example, offers a free dessert. Another restaurant is offering a free beer, you know, uh, to, the, uh, to the father and the family. So as long as the family comes in, you know, they, they have their nice little dinner and, you know, dad gets a dessert or dad gets a drink. So you can come up with all kinds of different, obviously, ways how you can do it. But all of the holidays and stuff are perfect for doing this. Mother's Day, Father's Day, Memorial Day, Fourth of July, you know, New Year. I mean, all these holidays. You can come up with creative stuff for, like, President's Day. Uh, I mean, you can do Groundhog's Day. You can do, I mean, a zillion different things you can potentially do. So holidays are a normal deal. Another thing that we do that I think is very also in terms of building this relationship thing is the deal with birthdays. You know, from time to time, you can send an email with a simple link to a Google form that asks them, you know, we really like to get your opinion about how we're doing. So you ask them a little, you send out a little survey saying, you know, let us know how we're doing in terms of, you know, rate us for service, rate us for food, rate us for all the different, you know, don't make it too long, but, you know, so people can respond and give you an idea. And I realize these are your best customers, but at the same time, they also have experiences. So it's valuable to hear from them because they're interested in, in helping you. So th they would be much more reciprocal in actually getting back to you and actually telling you what they think can help uh, for you to, to provide better experience better service and while they're responding to you because of the fact that you're asking them for this it also makes them feel that much better about the whole relationship with you because you care to ask them and listen to what they're saying and and hopefully you'll take care of whatever you take care of to make sure that you don't just ask and then don't do anything you'll actually take steps necessary to improve things as they're being suggested so all of this works to build these relationships so in terms of birthdays and going back to that again uh, as part of this deal you say you know we'd like to send you a birthday gift for example um, or give you some kind of a gift on them on a yearly basis if you just let us know what your birthday month and, and uh, day is you don't need to ask them for their year and then you would be you know in my experience i would say at least 99 percent of people uh well, I shouldn't say at least. I would say about 98 to 99 percent of people actually do supply optional birthday month and day, and that winds up creating a situation where, on a monthly basis, what I do is I send an email out. If I do it for the client, they can do it themselves too, obviously, uh, because they have the email addresses. It just shows, you know, here's all the emails. I mean, here are all the email addresses for people whose birthday is in June. So you send one email out in June. You don't send emails on, on a particular birthday you just send it like in the beginning of june simply you know congratulating them and putting some kind of deal in there some sort of an offer and then there's one of the other things you could potentially do is from one of these emails you can ask people for things like if you don't mind you know happy birthday so on and so forth and if you don't mind we'd really appreciate you giving us a review on google and here is the link you know in small print somewhere below so a lot of people will skip it, but a lot of people, you know, you're wishing me happy birthday. I like you because of this, because you're obviously you care to a degree. I mean, I understand you're not my closest relative, but you're acting better than some of my relatives because they didn't even call me, but you're sending me this email with this nice offer and congratulate, you know, wishing me happy birthday. So it's a very, very nice thing to do. Very personal, very nice gesture. And so you're asking me, you know, being this nice to me, if I don't mind to leave a little review on Google, I'm in the stellar mood right now. Of course, I don't mind giving you, you know, a review on Google if I haven't done it before. So I simply click on the link, takes me to your Google page of reviews. I write a review. Now, me being your ideal customer, just think about that from a psychology standpoint, 
me being your ideal customer, if I leave a review on Google, do you think there is any possibility or any chance, me being one of your ideal customers, me being in a really good mood, really feeling good about you because you wish me a happy birthday, would I ever say anything even somewhat negative about you at that particular moment in time? The answer is no. Obviously, it's a pretty obvious thing. Human nature, reciprocation, you know, it's it's a it, it's a nice thing to do for somebody who does something nice for you. And I actually have done some tests with this to prove the the that this is the case, not with birthday messages, but with some other messages, uh, emails, where I sent that very request. A restaurant had a rating on Google of 3.7 when I started dealing with them, and we started the whole concept here with Fred. And so I took a list of a little over 100 people by that time, uh, and I um, emailed them asking them to leave a review. So they actually left reviews, and of course I didn't ask them to leave good review, bad review, I just asked them if they don't mind to please take a moment and review the restaurant on Google. Within, I think, about 10 days or so, a week, 10 days, something like that, they went from 3.7 to 4.1, okay? That's how many reviews came in out of just a little over 100 people. Uh, and of course, not even anywhere close to all of them actually left reviews, but enough to kick the rating all the way to 4.1. And then later on, um, somebody left a one-star review. Obviously, you're, you're not going to have happy customers all the time. And that dropped it down to 4.0 because of this one one-star review. So then later at some point in time with one other email, I also... In requested the same thing and if you don't mind leaving a review if you haven't had a chance yet please do so if you don't mind and again we just jumped right back to 4.1 after just you know it was like i think three people left reviews at that point okay so one of the things you can use this approach for we're having email lists of your ideal customers is not only engaging with them in building continuously building relationships so the 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 fact the customer loyalty end of it is definitely a relationship building because people keep coming back they keep giving you business, you keep giving the discounts, it's definitely relationship building right there. At the same time, having these emails go out, where you're doing that at the same time as well, now these emails go out at different points in time, again, you're doing a relationship building with these people on an ongoing basis, that's the key thing, on an ongoing basis. And and people will reciprocate in kind, and as, you, as this little example I just pointed out, you can use it for things like relationship management too where you can you know, improve your Google ratings fairly easily because dealing with negative reviews is a tough thing, okay? If you ignore them, obviously your rating is gonna go down, you're not doing any good to yourself. If you lash out at these people and tell them that they're basically, don't know what they're talking about or call them names or anything, completely counterproductive. Don't even think about doing anything like that, okay? You're not gonna score any points with anybody. If you reply to these ratings, or these re negative reviews in a positive manner, which is what I recommend you do do, that's not gonna improve your rating. That may improve something in their mind and show other people that you do care and you wanna make things better. You know, everybody makes mistakes, everybody has problems at times, so it, it's people understand that all of them do it, so all of them can empathize with that. But at the same time, you're addressing it in a positive, positive manner. But that's not gonna move your rating up no matter how positively you address it, it's not going to change the rating. So the only way to change the rating is to have more ratings of better uh, quality, better value, if you will. Okay? And the only way to do it is just to get people to, to, to do that. So with that said, that's, you know, Fred is a perfect vehicle for that because you have this email address list which is constantly growing. You know, as time progresses, you constantly keep growing, growing, growing. And so you have more and more people to go out to. And like I said, based on what I described before, these are your ideal customers. These are people who know you, because otherwise, how could they sign up for this? These are people who like you. Why would they sign up if they didn't like you, right? And then these are people who are coming back and giving you more and more business because of the nature of the customer loyalty thing, right? You need to they need to keep coming back to be able to get these discounts. And of course, once people get in the mode, you know, some people say that uh, it takes somebody four visits for uh, to, for this loyalty situation to to really bring some benefits. And I think it varies. I don't think it's just four visits, but the idea is it needs to be a continuous um, on a continuous basis. And so all of these things that you described, and I just wanted to give you food for thought. 
it's not like this is the you just do this this and this and you're completely done you can come up with all kinds of different campaigns yourself i'm just saying that fred you know the frequent dividends program is a tool or a vehicle for you to very easily implement it all you have is the qr code in front and that's been pretty much it you can plaster it anyway by the way anyway not anyway anywhere you can put it on your social media you can put it on your email a uh, list that you go to to other people. You can put it on your website. You can put it pretty much on your blog. Anywhere you want, you can put these QR codes. And yes, you know potentially people will sign up who you know live somewhere else because they don't understand, don't know any better. You don't really care about that because it's not gonna it's not gonna remove the the positive of it of people who are the right people signing up at the place. So if you don't want somebody signing up from your blog, don't post on your blog, and you can keep it strictly at your restaurant then you know that it's just people who come in so potentially you know if that's better for you you do it that way but you can also you if you want to you can post it on social media and uh, remember there's no detriment if these people sign up for the deal and then they don't do anything to give you business it, it's it's nothing to you now it's you don't lose any money you don't lose any time you don't lose anything with your effort so it doesn't really hurt anything but if there are some people in your area that found you through your blog and then they see it there and then from there they decided to sign up and then they're going to come in then there's a value in having it on your blog as well you know your your choice but the bottom line here again is that you have the customer loyalty up in front you have the email building email list building of customers that want to do business with you for the most part um unless they sign up for another, from another country like i said if you do this other day but seriously though mostly it's people who are people who want to do business with you and then you just engage with them via email which is again the best medium you can use to engage with people and you start building this relationship and you build this trust and people do keep coming back yes maybe they initially are coming back to get discounts from you but eventually they get to like you they get to deal with you because they want to do it and so the ones who like you who get to do it the ones who you know come here for 17 years and say you guys are great those are your become pretty much your ambassadors they share pictures online with your um, restaurant, with your business. They share videos. They share their sentiments. They bring their uh, fellow coworkers. They bring friends and family. This is these are the people who over time become essentially your ambassadors, which is another big benefit of having this kind of program in place. Okay. So if you have any questions, you're welcome to leave them. Um, uh, on for me on Google Plus, uh, or you can leave them uh, under the video on YouTube, you know, wherever you can easily find me on um, Google Plus. You can find me on Instagram, but the, most of my business stuff is on uh, Google Plus. And the Fred is available right now. Uh, the current price is $99 a month. And um, the way it's set up is that if you do not jump out but it's there is no long-term commitment so you can jump out anytime you wish no questions asked but if you jump in whatever price you're paying per month is going to stay this way permanently i mean this is just the way we got it set up so you get this price freeze uh and it stays permanently until you jump out once you jump out then if you wanted to jump back in then you pay whatever the current price is at the time and we are thinking of raising the price to 149 dollars a month because 99 seems to be like everybody's just gobbling it up because it's not it's pretty cheap for for what you actually get but for now it is 99 dollars a month um to give you some reference to other people doing something similar nobody i haven't seen another system that's exactly like fred uh, there are people who are doing digital loyalty uh, program without any question they're not exactly the same programs as mine is and they're also not the same in terms of not only functionality but also the ease of use and implementation and um, the, one of the programs I want to mention any names, but there is a program that requires people to log into a tablet every time they want to get discounts, and and at the same time when they log in, they get points, which is pretty useless because nobody really understands what points are. You know, some people do ten points per dollar, some people do one point per dollar. You know, get a star equivalent. I mean, buy for a dollar, you get two stars, like Starbucks does. I mean, people do it all over the place, all over the way. But the important thing to me is that most people, we deal with dollars. If somebody tells you you get $2 off, you know what it means. If somebody tells you you have 256 points, if you do something, that doesn't mean anything to me. So our system is not you know, set up to be as simple to use and understand as possible. 
and at the same time, uh, obviously easy implementation. And in the cost is that other uh, system that I was telling you about that some people have, where people have to log in every time uh, on the tablet to be able to use the points. I mean, it's just much, much more hassle. And it's uh, about a little over three times more money per month than uh, what Fred is. So Fred is definitely right now priced at, at really uh, much, much cheaper. And that's why I'm saying that they're probably going to go up in price somewhat. But right now, we're rolling through the introductory offer since we've had Fred running for a couple of months now. Um, and it's probably going to continue through the end of summer at this price of uh, $99 a month. Uh, there is no setup fee right now, so that's another thing you get uh, as part of this introductory offer. And uh, you can jump out anytime. Like I said, if it's something that you not for you, then not a problem. So contact PCS, contact me, Oleg Moskolansky, if you'd like to get your restaurant uh, into this program. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions, and I appreciate your time and consideration today. Thank you. Bye-bye.